guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. This is our needle felting part four. So this is the last video of this particular series before I pull out some new things. I am currently creating some the stuffed animals. They're teddy bears, or my intention for them was to be teddy bears. I don't know if they actually look like teddy bears, but I'm trying. Um, I apologize in advance for the camera shake. I completely forget to take my arms off my table when I do this, which is what's causing the entire camera to shake because, yeah, I'm stabbing at this thing and making a lot of ruckus. And so I totally get it if you want to skip this part. I think it clears up in later on in the video. But I just want you guys to be aware, no matter how many times I make these little teddy bears, they end up super skinny and not fat and fluffy at all. And I'm not sure how in the world I continue getting skinny bears and not fat and fluffy bears. I, I'm doing something wrong, but I'm not sure what it is. So as you can see here, the bear has changed. So I made a couple of these. My body is in, it's about the length of my thumb and my arms and my legs have, a, have all that extra fur at the top. So this allows you to see what I'm going to be using to attach to the body. So those extra fibers, those loose fibers that have not been felted together, allow me to attach them to the body more securely. So as you can see, that's the head. I'm putting the head on the body, figuring out which way, which one look, looks best, where's it go. And then I, then I start felting those loose fibers into the body. And that is actually the best way to connect arms and legs and heads and things to the body. It looks really funky, looks super weird, but it's more secure that way. And you just, you just, you know, stab it in place. Just stab it until it's all attached. So I'm currently stabbing, stabbing, stabbing the loose felt into the body. As you can see here, I'm taking care to make sure that I go in through the top of the head as well, around the neck, to not only attach the loose fibers that are a part of the head to the outside of the body, but to make sure I also have fibers on the inside of the head going into the inside of the body so that it's attached on the inside and the outside. Right there, I'm trying to define the neck to make sure that you can tell it's a separate piece, the roundness of the head from the squareness of the body. And I roll it in between my hands because it helps distribute some of the holes that the holes that I poke into the body kind of disappear when you do that. And so it, it helps shape it and makes the holes disappear a little bit. So here we go. We're attaching legs and then we're going to attach the arms. So here we go with the second body, a sec second body, second, second leg. And, and you know, take your time and figure out the best placement for your legs. It wasn't until after I put these legs on that I realized I gave 
I gave my my little pink guy here a booty. So my legs are slightly forward on one side than they are the other side. So it looks like he has a booty. Okay, so it looks like I got two legs attached now. Awesome. So now on to the arms. Now, the way this works here with the arms, you see how I kind of split it? That kind of goes onto the top of the shoulders and around the neck. And so that way he has a lot of area secured around the top of the body to, um, to make sure his arms won't come off. We don't, we don't want his arms to come off and see how I cut it, I cut it right there so that I don't do any fibers up on his head. It's, it's just around his neck and his upper body. We gotta make sure we get him in his armpits. Make sure that that we connect. We need to make sure that we we felt him in all of his joints. position and if I need to change it I can pin it again right there so it looks like it's in a good position and now I'm just going to felt the rest of them Back into his armpit. There you go. Double check and make sure you get all his joints securely fastened to the body. Okay, so now we have this little pink body. At this point in time, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with his face or anything else. But um, but there you go. So now we have a pink body with the head and arms attached. So now, so on this particular one, this is not the one that I had made in the thumbnail. He's the second one. But if, if you notice, I didn't leave that extra fiber hanging out for his arms and legs, or not a whole lot. And so I had a more difficult time uh, making sure that he had all his, that his joints were fastened the way they should have been. Because there was less fibers there to fasten to the body. And so I wish I had left some more loosey-goosey layers on those legs than I did.
All right. For this one, I'm attaching ears. Now, I preform the ears so they have the lovely little round half circle with the tufts at the bottom. So that's how I'm attaching it to the head. The, that extra strands of fiber are loosey-goosey there so that I can use those and spread them about the head to attach them and move them where I needed them. And it also gives me a little extra fiber to kind of fill in spots that might be a little lumpy or uneven. It's a little hard to see the brown here in my light, but you can kind of see it. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to define around the ear where where it attached at. So you can definitely see the difference between where the ear attaches to the head and where the head is. Because I don't want it to blend in where you can't tell that there's an ear there other than just a lump poking out of his head. I want to go in and like I did the neck on the purple body, I want to go in and define that area. And there you go, and you got now you got a bear with ears. Isn't he cute? Skinny, a skinny bear, and a, a pink buddy. All right, so here we go. I've done some work on on the pink bear. I've given him a little pair of pink ear somethings, and a face and a tummy. I wanted to put in the black eyes. So this particular part is where I'm showing you how to put those plastic eye pins in, how it's done, and what it's supposed to look like. So I had to grab my awl. Now, you may feel like you're torturing your animal. Smaller ones, the smaller ones look a lot better. So there you go. So I'm using Fabrifix uh, to glue the eyes in and you just need the teeny weeniest little amount because if you use too much that Fabrifix gets all over the place and it will mess up the face of your bear. You'll have a bear that looks like he has a runny nose and he just hasn't wiped his, wiped his nose. So you gotta use just, you just need the teeny, the, the, the itty bitty spidgiest bit to get in. I still had a hard time with this bear because every time, see, I had to go back and, and do his eye, create the hole for his eye stud like three times, I think it was, because the glue kept getting caught on the strands on the outside of the eye and cause, and wouldn't, wouldn't allow it to slide in. So you do really need to make sure that you can get your eye in all the way. Here we go, we're doing this for the third time. I think this is the time that it actually took. Oh, okay, well, I don't know where the rest of that, that footage went, but as you can see, I managed to get the eyes in on the pink one. I gave him a tail and he's got a little pink 
belly and some pink ears and a happy face, mostly happy face. And the brown bear, I actually attached a, um, what is that thing, a little charm chain, something or another to the back of it, back of him so that he could hang from my phone or whatever. He's super cute, slightly crooked. And then I have my mushroom, which I have also attached a chain to because I currently have the mushroom hanging up in my, in the walls of my sewing studio, as well as the pink bear. They got, they all got chains because I all have them hanging up on my walls. And there you go. And that's the end of the needle felting series. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Throw those comments down below. And I would love to see pictures. I do have a Facebook page. Uh, you can find me at Mrs. G Sews on Facebook. Have a good day.